Hey guys, this is back again. Welcome back, and welcome to another episode of On the Road Again. Today's question comes from Redneck Engineer, and um, I like that name. Uh, if you watched any of my videos, you know I've done my fair share of Redneck Engineering on my guns. Uh, but his question today is, um, could you discuss some muzzle brakes and muzzle devices or compensators for three guns? And uh, this is something that um, so I've certainly tried my share of muzzle devices. Um, before you choose one, though, um, you have to, I think, understand uh, a muzzle device on an AR-15 rifle basically serves three, maybe three and a half purposes. Uh, the first is to uh, dispel gases from the end of the barrel. Um, a small amount of the gas, as you know, goes through the gas tube. Uh, to cycle the bolt and allow the semi-automatic function of the rifle, but the majority of gas comes out the muzzle, and depending on the physics of the muzzle device and how those gases are dispelled will uh, determine what kind of muzzle movement you have uh, when the round leaves the barrel. So if your intended purpose in choice of device is for three gun, this is probably the biggest thing that you need to understand uh, in that um, how the ports are set up on the device, um, how big the ports are, and uh, in which direction they allow the gas to leave the muzzle um, will determine muzzle movement. Uh, and if you have a really good device, I guess lack of muzzle movement or lack of recoil. Um, the second is the flash signature uh, or the uh, flash or the flame that comes from the end of the barrel. Um, this is a big trade-off usually when you're considering a muzzle brake. Um, usually muzzle brakes with wide open ports have a huge flash signature um, and also a lot of concussion. Now if you're in a war that's a bad thing. Uh, you want a muzzle device with really good flash suppression uh, or a flash hider if you want to call it that. Um, if you're in three gun, you probably could care less. Uh, probably the only person that cares about the concussion from your rifle is the RO who's standing behind you because he's probably going to get uh, killed by just constant concussion from repetitive fire of your, uh, your rifle on every other shooter in your squad. So um, muzzle brakes usually have a lot of concussion and a lot of flash. Um, and then the third principle um, is sound suppression. Now, unless you're running a suppressor, this really is a non-factor because um, there's not going to be much uh, sound suppression with any type of open-ended uh, muzzle device. Um, if you are running a suppressor, then you know that the muzzle device you choice, uh, the muzzle device you choose for your rifle, has to be set up to access uh, to accept the uh, the suppressor that you have. So. If you're choosing a muzzle brake, it's usually made by the same company uh, as your suppressor. So that's why I say three and a half. You gotta, if you're considering the sound suppression, you're probably considering setup for a suppressor as well. So if we're talking about three gun, as I said before, we're really talking about limitation of muzzle movement. And that usually falls into the category of muzzle brakes. Now I've tried quite a few. Um, I haven't tried them all. Uh, but I do follow a lot of the pro shooters and I see the equipment that they use and I know kind of what the most popular devices are. Uh, now my opinions might be a little bit biased by what I use, um, so I'll try to keep this as unbiased as possible. Um, I think most uh, muzzle devices for three gun kind of fall under the bell shaped curve in that, you know, 98% of them all basically do about the same thing. Um, they probably do a fair job of controlling muzzle movement and you probably for the average shooter would not be able to tell much of a difference in the vast majority of them. Now on the left hand side of the bell shaped curve you may have your pretty poor muzzle brakes which don't really change your muzzle movement at all or actually overcompensate it. Um, I've tried one muzzle device which caused my muzzle to dip quite a bit and that was the battle comp. Uh, now I'm not bashing battle comp, I really like the muzzle device, in fact I still run one on my Mark 18 rifle. 
reason is is that I think it does a really good job for a compensator of flash suppression and with the Mark 18 being a 10.3 inch barrel uh, there's quite a bit of concussion and blast that come out of the end of that short barrel so the battle comp does a really good job for me at least on that rifle of pretty moderate flash suppression um, and also limiting the muzzle movement now having shot one on a 16 inch barrel before it definitely caused the muzzle to dip um, and I found myself constantly having to pull my reticle back up on the targets and it ended up being a no-go for three-gun competition so um, in my mind muzzle devices or compensators that overcompensate or cause muzzle dip are poor choices for three-gun um, now as far as your kind of run-of-the-mill uh, muzzle brakes um, the most common ones you're gonna see people use are uh, the SJC Titan I ran that one for about a year. It worked really well for me on my 18 inch barrel with rifle length gas. Um, I had pretty much tuned it to the point where I had little to no muzzle movement. That being said, I tried one on a 16 inch barrel uh, with intermediate gas and I had more muzzle movement than I wanted. So um, I ended up moving to a different device. Overall, there are a lot of people that use the SJC Titan. It was developed by Eric Lund, another Georgian, so um, I have to give him a little props for that. Um, so that's one to keep in mind. You're going to spend a little less than 100 bucks for that one. Um, also, uh, let's see, the Surefire SB556 is a pretty good option. Um, it has quite a bit of concussion and muzzle blast, but it does a really good job of limiting muzzle movement. I haven't personally run that one before because my personal feeling on that brake is that I would probably only use it if I were going to set it up for a surefire suppressor. Um, other than that, then, um, I've also used an AAC muzzle brake. The reason being is that it's on my 300 blackout rifle, and um, if I were ever to try and secure a suppressor for it, it would be an AAC can. Um, that actually does a really good job of uh, muzzle movement but there's quite a bit of blast um, so like I said that choice was only because of po uh, possible suppressor choice not because I think it would be the best for three gun um, if you're budget minded the Jerry Michelak DPMS muzzle brake is a really really good option um, I have a friend who ran that one for quite a while and I was always impressed by how flat his rifle shot um, it's pretty cheap too. You can pick it up for about 50 bucks. It's probably the cheapest and most economical muzzle brake that you're going to be able to get into in three gun competition. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, that one. Um, and then there are some newer ones on the market now. You know, as with anything with AR 15s, there's basically something new coming out every week. And with it being right around Shot Show right now, I know there are new devices coming on the market. Um, who knows yet how they'll perform. Um, SLR Rifle Works is coming out with or has come out with recently a new uh, muzzle device that I'm probably going to be testing at some point. Um, uh, that kind of reminds me as well. There's some pro shooters that use the Seekins Precision muzzle brake as well. I, I know that it works uh, very well if a lot of pros are using it. I haven't personally used that one, but that's another option. Um, but then talking about the bell-shaped curve, I think, in my opinion, there are two muzzle devices or muzzle brakes for three gun that definitely sit on the right-hand side of the bell-shaped curve or in the upper 99th to 100 percentile, if you want to think about it statistically. Uh, one, whether you think it's biased or not, it's the device that I'm using right now on my three gun rifle, and that's the Lantac Dragon. I was skeptical of this device at first. I'd never seen any pro shooters use it. I hadn't really heard much about it. I tested it and evaluated it through my sponsor, Strong, Tide, Strong Side Tactical. And the very first day that I used it, I immediately took the SJC Titan off of the 16 inch rifle and have been shooting the Lantac Dragon ever since. It's incredibly flat. It does not overcompensate. There's technology built into it to allow the gases to dispel in just the right manner so that there's literally no muzzle movement. And it also does a fair job 
uh, flash suppression as well. So I don't think you're ever going to find a, per a perfect muzzle device that does everything well. You know, it's never going to keep the muzzle perfectly still and eliminate all the flash. But the Lantac Dragon does a really, I think, a pretty good job of meeting somewhere in the middle and doing a good job at both. Um, and then the other device um, that I have not personally used but my best buddy Jared uses is the um, Benny Hill Rolling Thunder. Um, there's a lot of pros that use that one. It works great and it's also tunable uh, because you can enlarge the port uh, on the top of the muzzle device um, and sort of test your own muzzle brake and fine tune it to your rifle and you can get it to the point where uh, there's literally no muzzle movement so that I like a lot of these other devices don't have any tunability um, the Benny Hill does so if you're looking for something that you can tinker with and fine tune that might be the best option for you and I think those two are in my opinion clear cut above the rest at least at this point one because it's what I use and I have experience with the other is because my buddy Jared uses and his rifle never moves um, the muzzle is completely flat the only thing is that if you're standing next to it when somebody's shooting it it feels like there's a howitzer going off next to your head because it has unbelievable concussion so that's um, actually a little bit longer video than I had planned on but um, that's kind of a, a brief my opinion on muzzle brakes and muzzle devices for three gun I hope that answered your question uh, redneck engineer um, you can expect to spend at the very least 50 bucks on a really good three gun compensator and in all honesty you're probably going to spend at least a hundred bucks to get into a good muzzle brake and all things being considered I think that is the most important thing on a three gun rifle to eliminate recoil or minimize recoil and allow really quick follow-up shots is choosing the right muzzle device so um, that's it for this episode of on the road again um, please join me next time I usually post these videos about once a week um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do by clicking on the link below in the description or either clicking on the bullet logo up in the right hand corner of the video as always this is Mac please like the video be safe out there and we'll see you next time.